the game was really um, soft in the last stream. When I was editing the edited version together, I had to bump that volume by 24 decibels, something like that. So I'm going to have to turn that up in OBS because it was really soft. We are back in the Normandy once more. Uh, last time what we did was we just got Liara and we haven't spoken to anybody after getting Liara. So we are actually going to talk to most of the squad mates because they will have things to say as we just finished a story mission. I'm almost at 150 subs on this channel. Yeah, that's great. I really hope that those 150 people are super into Mass Effect because that's the point of this channel is mainly to trick people into liking Mass Effect. <laughs> like that is my main goal. It's not even to get this channel monetized or anything. I just want people to be into Mass Effect. I prefer gold to silver, you know, oh, yes. for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. If we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. That's a good point. They'd probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this, baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? I have to go. All right, see ya. Okay, he just wanted to brag about the fact that he saved us when we picked up Liara. Let's speak to Caden first. We'll go down the line here. What's up, Caden? I still don't know what you're doing at this panel. I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get back up from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. I mean, it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Hmm. Um, it's a romantic view? I don't think it's, like, old-fashioned is not the nicest way to describe it. Well, well, you're a romantic. Exactly. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure man's future in space. <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid. Yeah, I can tell. To space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or you know, for justice. Now, maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry, biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Uh, so basically, <sighs> human experimentation in all but name. Also, Caden is... Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's fishy as shit. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do though. It was a research platform then and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Oh, uh, the extranet is... It's the internet, but uh, intergalactic. That's why they call it the extranet. I haven't really looked into the codex of how the extranet works, but that's what that is. 
That is hella fishy. I thought it was going to be original ones from the accident. Yeah, it's really super suspicious. Uh, the VAs in the whole game have been killing it so far. Yeah, oh, I see. Uh, um, me and my guest were saying Caden's voice actor is doing really good. Caden's voice actor is really good. Like I said, I don't like focusing on the voice actors too much because <laughs> I don't like having that immersion break uh, broken. I prefer looking at the, the voices as coming from the characters. I don't like sitting here and thinking of the actor behind the mic because it really, it like fucks up when, how I play video games. I think I told the story where it almost borderline ruined Dragon Age Inquisition for me. Um, time, what, time to get physical? What on earth is this option? Anyway. Uh, then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart. And charming as hell. Beautiful. But not stuck up about it. Like you, I guess. Ma'am. <laughs> He's so pathetic. But like in a in a <sighs> almost like a golden retriever way, although um I wouldn't use that description exactly for him because he's at least a little bit smarter than the average dude that you would describe as a golden retriever. <laughs> Corporate shenanigans throughout early biotic development doesn't sound surprising. Yeah, no, it's really not surprising at all. Um, this is a loaded question considering the weird situationship going on here, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same, but things never felt together. Training, you know? Okay, he actually doesn't want to go too deep into it. Okay, fair enough. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Yeah. I, in this case, I wouldn't chalk it up to accidental, quite frankly. It's too, it's too controlled to be accidental, if that makes sense. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I mean, I'm talking to you, aren't I? It's, it's why I talk to the crew, is to get to know the crew. I wanted to get to know you a little better. That's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome, ma'am. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? Uh, this is a rough choice because... I think, are all three of these like a flirt option? And what do you think? It's all the way at the top, which is usually like coming on the hardest. But that's such a weird way to voice whatever Shepard is going to say if you choose this. Um, I am actually going to say to some degree though, because it is true. <laughs> Sorry, Caden. Of course. But I don't enjoy it with everyone. We'll talk again later. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah. I'd like that. See what I mean? Like, you literally need, like, a guide to not fall into a relationship with Caden. It is borderline impossible. Because I literally chose the least romantic option out of those, and he still thinks that was flirting. Anyway, I'm gonna grab these things. Oh, we need to go to the Citadel and get Garrus some armor so he can stop dying on me on the first shot. It's embarrassing for both of us. This whole exposure biotics thing has some serious MK Ultra vibes. Yeah. And the thing is, right, um, the corporation he's talking about, it's not a government body. It's a corporation, which makes it even more sus. Let's talk to Rex. I think Rex might have more to say. So. Yes. We've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten to the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. 
So Rex knew actually knew Saren before all this. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Nah, uh, I mean, fair. Whose ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Hmm. So long, Rex. Shepard. I just realized I actually walked past Liara because she hangs out in the medical bay. We actually have to go talk to her before we talk to the others. The thing is, Rex, I don't think he has a set age in the games. I believe... I saw some people say he was alive during the Krogan rebellions. I don't know where they're getting that information from. I know his um his like he has family members who were alive during that period. Oh, I'm going to see I see where on earth am I going? I'm supposed to be I'm all turned around now. I'm, I'm used to the second game where things are kind of moved around a little bit. But anyway, um I believe Rex was alive during the Krogan rebellion, so that would put him at minimum a thousand. He, I, I saw the, the number 1,300 floating around. I don't know if that's accurate, though. Point is, if Rex has a bad feeling about someone, it's worth listening to him. Anyway, let's speak to Liara, finally. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... It's fine, Liara. I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. How long do Krogans live? Uh, typically... I'm not sure. It They're really long-lived. They and the Asari, like the Asari, which is Liara here, they tend to be very proud of the fact that they can reach up to a thousand, but the Krogan surpass them in lifespan, actually. So, <laughs> it's kind of full of themselves to be like, oh, we live up to a thousand. It's like, yeah, so do the Krogans. You're not that special. Um, she will do anything she can to stop Saren. I know she will. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Uh, let's talk to you a bit, see if you have anything to say. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Hmm. I am gonna choose this one. Yeah. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. 
Sometimes I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers, but I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau, I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. I just realized Liara is basically Indiana Jones, but with force powers. <laughs> you don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. I mean... I like archaeology a lot, so in my opinion there is literally no bad reason for becoming an archaeologist. Unless you're, again, like the bad guy in Indiana Jones, like, like looting crypts or whatever. But Liara somehow doesn't strike me as the type. All children rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. Uh -huh. You share the wisdom of the matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Benezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. Okay, I'm not gonna yell at Liara. Liara is basically a Disney princess. I have a feeling if I said one mean thing to her, she would just burst out, burst into tears. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No, <laughs> I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. Well, you can pretend. I'm not going to pretend. She's flustered because Liara has the biggest crush on Commander Shepard ever. That's also kind of her problem. Is <laughs> She's really flustered. Uh, let's speak about your... It'll kill the mood a little, but we kind of have to talk about her mom, who's busy working with Saren, if you weren't here earlier. We picked her up because Saren basically sent the gift to come collect her, and we were like, well, are you in cahoots with Benezia? And Liara said she isn't, so we kind of need to talk about this. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. <laughs> Maybe she's just evil. <laughs> this hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Hmm. Um, I don't think Shepard has had much contact... Well, I would say that, but we spoke to the consort on the Citadel. But I don't think Shepard has had any normal contact with an Asari before. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. <laughs> Some of these choices, good lord. I know some people play Renegade Shepherd, but I cannot imagine how you can choose some of these things and not like cringe 
at how mean some of these responses are. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Yeah, we kind of need to ask this. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. It sounds parasitic. Not really, because a parasitic relationship requires you to do damage to the other party. Um, I don't know if symbiotic is the correct term for it, because I, I guess it's symbiotic if the other partner wants a family. Then it could be considered symbiotic. But generally it's benign, because it doesn't truly affect the other partner in any negative sense. So, uh, by definition, it's not parasitic. And also, I believe they can choose when to have a child with the other partner. Like, it's not like they, they are intimate with the other partner, whether mentally or physically, and that automatically results in a child. I think they have to initiate a certain weird force blend for that to actually result in pregnancy. Do you know who Matriarch Venezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common, not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Hmm, that's rough. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. If something could have happened to her, maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. And I think this is the conversation tree we just went down. Okay. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Bye, Liara. So that's Liara. Yeah, the Asari entire... I want to say sex, but I mean it in gender, if that makes sense. Like, biological sex thing is also very strange. Because they, they're they technically all female, because all Asari can carry children. But at the same time, they're monogendered. So, it's basically a race of agender aliens. Uh, let's speak to Ashley and just get this out of the way. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Anytime Ashley says she wants to speak off the record, I just know some bullshit is about to come out of her mouth. I keep an open-door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. 
right? I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. Yep, there With it is. Respect, Commander. Should they have full access to the ship? Should we lock them in the hold, Ashley? Should we lock them in the hold and smack their hands, telling them not to touch anything? Is that what you want, Ashley? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. Ugh! I have once told her to shut the hell up during this conversation, but it's actually not a good idea. And it kind of breaks roleplay for Shepard because her character is all about building bridges and clearing up misunderstandings, especially between species. But ooh, ooh, she tests me. Good lord. Also, Ashley, are you aware that the Normandy was made by Turians as well as humans? Are you aware of this fact? You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. Ah. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. No, we don't. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. Despite all points to the contrary, I'm still gonna disagree with you. You got a pessimistic view of the universe, Williams. A pessimist is what an optimist calls a realist. Look. If you're fighting a bear, and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. Mm. It's not racism, not racism. It is! Members of their species will It's literally be racism! ...than humans are. Sorry, I'm talking over her. She, she gets me so heated, I swear. <sighs> yeah, why do you feel that? Explain yourself. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. I was about to ask her something, but I'm actually not going to because <laughs> it'll get me in trouble on YouTube. Uh, I ended no. Anyway. It's moments like these where I wish knife hand was the weapon wheel. So tell me about your your service, Ashley. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. Yeah, what no, what clued you in, Shepard? Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. I'm actually not even going to compliment her. I'm, I'm so done with her. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. Mm-hmm. You're lucky. I lost my family on Mindoir. Are you related to anyone I'd have heard of? Couldn't say, Commander. I read about Mindoir. The Alliance screwed the pooch on that one. Should have had a bigger garrison. Is that why you're out here? To take the fight to the pirates? At least she didn't linger on the trauma. I'm not going to choose to serve the Alliance. I mean, I am here to serve the Alliance, but also that's such a militaristic response. No, the future of humanity is out here. There's so much we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I still remember my first field exercise on Titan. When we hit mud, the reality hit me. I'm the first person who ever stood here. Then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass. I went face first into the muck. He spent the next five minutes chewing me out for gold breaking. Don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison. <laughs> He's the only one who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Oh lord, you went to the Makapog boot camp too? Yeah, Gunny Ellison's still reaming out recruits down there. Kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. <laughs> I think pusillanimous is a real word. I've never heard of inveigle before in my life. 
Uh, I asked her about her military family. Okay, um, you have to work with aliens, Ashley. You're in space. They're kind of the majority here. Just shut up now. I'm actually not going to tell her to shut up as much as I would like to. All right, I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. Okay, good. I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. <laughs> you never we'll know, see about Commander. that. <laughs> What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? <sighs> We're really tallying up these stereotypes here, aren't we? Uh, military family, super racist, and believes that if you're family, that means you are automatically, like, really close. Like, like the concept of family members being estranged seems like a foreign idea to her. Anyway, I fully believe Liara. She is too awkward and weird to be lying or to be hiding. Like, there's a level of awkward that you can fake, and then there's a level of awkward that is just so embarrassing that you can't fake that. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Hey, want me to ask her about her sex life? Oh! <sighs> <laughs> How do I even respond to that? <sighs> so she's also homophobic. That's good. I don't think she's used to teasing. Good natured or otherwise. No fun, Commander. Shut up, Ashley. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, Dismissed, I'm so chief. done. I am so Man. done with Ashley. I am so done with fucking Ashley. <sighs> Is there an airlock? I mean, that's an airlock. Uh, anyway, <sighs> let's speak to Garrus. Hi, Garrus. Give me strength. Commander, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Such as? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it too. He was C-Sec, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. Oof. Cop dead, yeah. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger for the same reasons. Mm, I have opinions about Garrus's dad as well. Garrus's dad is not a bad person. Garrus's dad is just how I would imagine a retired cop to be. Anyway, apparently Garrus was going to become a specter as well. You were asked to be a specter. Well, I was targeted as a possible specter candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. Nah, it's, it's fine. I don't think I like Kest as much either. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules. C-Sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. I mean, true, but also, Garrus is kind of just trying to justify crossing a line. He's, uh, Garrus isn't like, he isn't purposefully like homicidal or anything, he's frustrated. That's his biggest problem, is the fact that he's frustrated. 
and he's just kind of trying to find a way to work the system so that he can bend rules to get results. That's his biggest problem. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. Okay, he's gonna think about it. We we'll sort him out eventually. Oh, hello, Shepard. Aw, oh, she's sad. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing. And your crew's been really great to me. Especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel... out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? I mean, I understand what she means, but again, sometimes Tully says things and I get I, I, I get what she's talking about, but then Shepard clearly does not. It's very funny. The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. Okay, fair enough, yeah. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Um, and I think we asked all of these things before, so I think that's it. I should go. See you later. Bye, Tali. Uh, Adams won't have any new dialogues, so we won't speak to him. I think that's everyone. He looks like he'll jump a few guns. Yeah, Garrus, Garrus's problem is, um, when he was working for Seasick, when he was like a new recruit they would put him on small jobs that were basically more or less just security i mean i know it's called it's called uh, citadel security but they would put him on security details and then the more he rose up in ranks the more paperwork uh, got shoveled his way so he spent more time doing paperwork than he did oops wrong button uh he didn't more time doing paperwork than he did actually helping anyone and because Garrus kind of has this thing about he, he like he said he wants to help people so he gets very frustrated that especially in an organization like CSEC especially in an message coming in oh. patching it through commander Shepard my name is Nasana Dantius I have a job for you. I can't say any more in an unsecured communication. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the Diplomat's Lounge on the Presidium. Okay, I was gonna buy uh, armor for Garrus, but we can do that. I think there's one or two things here that I've unlocked in the meantime. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yes, uh, they would put Garrus on security detail and then as he grew up, as he rose in the ranks, he would just get more and more paperwork and I think because it's you know CSEC even though it's called Citadel Security it's still a police it's it's a police it's a police system right so I think Garrus just got frustrated by like the politics involved in police business and I he doesn't really say it in this game he does complain about it in later games though where uh, criminals would get let loose due to red tape or due to uh, legal matters or like loopholes and such and he ki he's kind he's just frustrated and as he tries and do things to kind of skirt and prevent those kind of situations from happening 
his dad then keeps him in line and says to him, no, you have to do it by the book. So he's caught in this situation where he wants to help people and it feels like everybody is against him. interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Okay, cool. C6 seems almost military. Uh, kind of. Uh, oh, who's this? Um, they're most, they were established by the Turians and Tur with Turians everything is militaristic. Hello. Uh, Mikhailo Mikhailovich. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, 5th Fleet. Um, hello. Commander Shepard, SSV Normandy. You don't know who I am, do you, Commander? I command the 63rd Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. And the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship and you. Oh boy, another one of these. I still serve the Alliance, sir. As a Spectre, I can advance our interests to the Council. Huh. You still know what color your blood is? Shepard? Whoa! I don't begrudge the politician's decision to throw you to the Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin, though. She... <laughs> I mean, like, that's just your opinion, man. The Normandy is a fine ship, sir. She's served us well so far. It's a gimmick, Commander. Useless in a stand-up fight. This experiment diverted billions from our appropriations bills for the same price we could have had a heavy cruiser. But no, we had to make nice to the Turians, throw money at a co-developed boondoggle. I'm here to make an inspection, Commander. Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. <sighs> sure, fine, whatever. Um, it sucks because... He's being so aggressive for no reason and super racist right off the bat, but at the same time I kind of understand why he's frustrated if that's his real issue. We'd be honored to show her to you, Admiral. I'll just bet. Mm -hmm. Wait here. I won't be long. Commander, I'm not happy. Oh, of course you're not. Um, I'm not gonna say sorry, I want to know what you're unhappy about first. What did you find out of order? Who designed that CIC? Putting the commander aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? Modified Turian style. They prefer commanders looking over their subordinates rather than in the middle of them. We wanted to see how effectively they can command with that setup. Hmm. Reasonable goal, but they should have studied that in a lab rather than on a frontline warship. How do you know they didn't? I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it to hide for a few hours anyway? Useless. Do you think he's ever heard of something called a submarine? We can loiter in an enemy system and monitor traffic, or drop infiltration teams on enemy worlds. Normandy could be more effective than the Solarian STG. Maybe, maybe. But that's not the job of a proper warship. We're supposed to find and kill the enemy fleet, not count how many times their garrison goes to the bathroom. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander. Oh, uh, here we go. Krogan? Asari? Turians? What are you thinking, Commander? You can't allow alien nationals free access to Alliance equipment. Once again, you were just complaining about the ship being a Turian design, and now you're complaining that the Turians have access to the design. Between Saren and the Geth, we have enough enemies out here. Treating other species with suspicion and distrust won't win hearts and minds. That assumes the hearts and minds are worth winning. That hasn't been proven yet. Excuse you. Do you have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? Oh, I want to choose this so badly, but I don't have enough points. Ah! Fine, I don't have anything else to say. None, sir. Very well. I don't agree with any of this, but your reasons seem sound. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as... Negative, as I planned. Now oh, that's something, at least. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get lost. Good lord. The Quarians endangered the entire galaxy when they let the Geth break free. I hope your people are properly contrite. Excuse <laughs> Karis Nord! the Turians are properly contrite for releasing the Genophage upon the Krogan. 
You're assuming that sterilizing them was a mistake. Uh, Garrus! Holy fuck! I am gonna whip out the newspaper if you say one more thing. I, uh, Commander Shepard, oh. sorry to bother you. This is Lieutenant Girard down in the docking bay. There is a woman here. Uh, she was rescued from Batarian slavers a few weeks ago. She is from Mindwar. I guess she was taken in the raid on your town. She's been a slave for the past 13 years? Is she alright? Not really. She's a little... messed up. She got free somehow, grabbed a gun from one of my guys. Now she's holed up here in the docking bay. She, uh... she says she wants to die. I hoped you'd talk to her. It's a long shot, but you went through the same thing. The raid. I figured maybe you could talk her out of her tree. I'm on my way, Lieutenant. Sit tight. Anything you could do would be great. I don't want to... Uh, she's been through enough. I'll have my men stand by for you. Oof, okay, I didn't realize... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you later. Um, I didn't realize this this mission initiated right here. Um, so I'm gonna drop a trigger warning right here. Um, we're about to talk down a suicide attempt, so... Um, that's gonna be the next few minutes it's not very long but if um you if that's like a problem i'm gonna do my best f for this to turn out positively but but this this mission is rough i'm not gonna lie commander glad to see you i wish it were under better circumstances where is she behind those shipping containers i've got a sniper position but i don't think we'll need him She's only a danger to herself. We've got a sedative to calm her down, but we can't get close to her. Every step we take gets her more wound up. You seem awfully worried about her. I... I I'm just doing my job, Commander. I hope I don't need it. Tell your men to stand by. Don't push her too hard. If she seems liable to pull the trigger, back off. Or walk away. I am willing to wait her out. Good luck, Commander. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Tali, now's not the time to be impressed by the ship. We we need to talk to Talitha. Stop! Stop! What are you... What are you? My name is Shepard. Lieutenant Gerard sent me to talk to you. What's your name? Animals don't get names. The Masters put their symbols on her. Hot metal all over her back. She screams when they do it. You're not an animal. Your parents, what did they call you? Do you remember them? She remembers a lot of things. Talitha. They call her that. She... She doesn't remember the rest. Leave her alone. Mm. I think she's still okay. I'm going to talk to her about Mindwar first. I think that's the right decision. I was on Mindwar. My parents died in the raid. Lying! You get hit for lying! Get the buzz or the burning! Can't be there. Why are you alive? Why are you? Why are you like her? Broken. Only fit to dig and carry. For a while I was broken. I lost my whole family, Talitha. My friends, my childhood. I had to pull myself up and keep going. You lose your mommy and daddy, but you don't dig, you don't carry. You stand up. She wishes she could stand up. Okay, I think it's okay to approach her. I'm sorry, it's really easy to mess up this mission. I'm gonna take a step towards you now. Okay. Okay, she's okay. No, she's no good. Don't want to be handled again. I think I I think she's still alright. Let's speak about I think the parents next. I don't want to jump straight to escape or the raid. What happened to your parents? There's she sees them, 
They're yelling, run, hide! They hit the masters. But the masters, they have lights and hoses. Daddy's, he's melting! Shh! She doesn't want to see that! Don't make her look! Don't look! Stupid, stupid! I know it hurts, Talitha, I'm sorry. But you need to deal with this. What happened to them? Think. When she thinks, water comes out of her eyes. The masters beat her when she wastes water. So she doesn't think anymore. She sees them. Mommy and Daddy. Burning in white light, melting, going to pieces. They can't even say anything to her. They're dead, Shepard. They try to save her and the masters burn them. Can she stop remembering now, please? Whew. Um... I think she's still okay. Mm. I, 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 I think she's still okay. I'm, go I'm gonna try and push it. I'm gonna take a step towards you now, okay? She doesn't want- Don't touch her! Okay. She still seems okay. Is she about to- No, she's got a gun. <sighs> okay, I think I can ask about the raid. I think. Because there's that in the escape. I think the raid first, then we'll ask about the escape. What's the last thing you remember from Minduar? Fires. Smells of smoke and burning meat. Animals screaming as the masters cage them. As they put the metal to their backs, put the wires in their brains. She pretends to be dead. If she's dead, she can't work. But they know. She hopes to leave. But they put her in the pen. She didn't fight. She was already broken when they put the wires in. Talitha, you were what, six years old? No one blames you for staying quiet and hoping they go away. The only person blaming you is you. She wants to believe that. She wants to believe nothing would change. She doesn't want to be there anymore. In the pen, in the cages, lying quiet while they do things to her. <sighs> okay, she, she's still okay. I think I have one more step and escape and I think, I think that'll do it. I'm gonna take a step towards you now, okay? Okay, th yeah, she's still okay, yeah. Please don't touch her! She's dirty, you'll catch it. How did you get here? Did you escape? She can't escape. They have chains, wires, needles. You go too far, they take your brains away. Animals like her come. Animals with guns. They make the masters explode. She tries to fix the masters so they won't be mad at her. She puts all the reds and purples back in, but they don't move. The other animals take her. You were afraid. All you'd known for 13 years was the master's abuse. So you tried to heal them. She doesn't want to see other animals. They're not real. They can't be real. They can't see her. If the animals can see her, then this is real. But it can't be. The wires, the chains, the hitting. This doesn't happen to her. It's another girl. A dirty girl. Stupid girl. She deserves it. It happens to her. Doesn't it? They see her, so it's real. She doesn't want it to be real. Okay. Oof, we actually cleared this. Talitha, this will make you sleep. If you fall asleep, they'll take you to a place where you can get better. Will she have bad dreams? You'll dream of a warm place, and when you wake up, you'll be in it. She'd like that. It hurts when she... When I remember... me. She wants to remember. 
Oh, okay, we cleared it. Gah. That mission is actually really, really hard, and I really didn't want her to shoot herself. Is it over, Commander? She took the sedative. She wants to get better, Lieutenant. Thanks, Commander. That means a lot. I didn't want to hurt her. It's just... When I see her curled into a ball and shivering... It, she was only six when they took her. Why the hell are we out here if we can't even keep one little girl safe? Bad things happen to good people, Lieutenant. That's why you and I are here. Don't wring your hands over her. Help her. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for your help, Commander. We are taking her to a counseling center. They'll help her get better. Ah, okay. Crisis averted. Holy fuck. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the heaviest missions in the game, I'm not gonna lie. It's really, really, really rough. And it's really hard to stay composed. It, it's... Oh, that's rough. Especially because, like, um... The colony that she was taken from is the same colony that um, Shepard's family died in. So that was like really close to home. The only difference is she was six years old when it happened and Shepard was 16. That's like the only reason that didn't end up being Shepard's upbringing. It's, it's, it's just bad. It's all just bad. However, um... I'm, I don't really like talking about the future games as I'm playing for people who are new, but I'm just going to let people know in case they're stressed out. Um, Talitha writes to Shepard in the second game, and she does do better in the second game. So if you're stressed out about Talitha, um, she she does get better. It's it's just really, it's, re it's really confronting. It's a really, really difficult mission. Your choice in armor is awfully... Garrus, please, time. not now! Did you wear something without a helmet? No, living in the clean environment of the flotilla has weakened our immune systems. The environmental suits protect against diseases. So your people are forever wandering, and now they couldn't settle if they wanted to. I'm sorry. I, he's being nice. Okay. I hope that was him, like, awkwardly apologizing for being a shithead earlier and now we have to talk to Kalisa holy shit okay prepare yourselves guys commander Shepard what Kalisa been seen in Aljilani Western Lynn news would you answer a few questions for our viewers I am so not in the mood I have had to speak to Ashley I have had to deal with an attempted suicide Kalisa you are pressing my last nerve what do you want to know You've been given a unique position to represent our race. People want to get a sense of how you'll do that. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? The specters represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? No. I mean... You know what, I don't even know why I'm entertaining the thought, no. The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? I mean, the Turians did help build it. I'm getting a little annoyed that everybody is like... Well, not everybody. I'm getting annoyed that the humans are overlooking the fact that it's a joint Turian venture. Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So, the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? <sighs> Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? Kalisa, I swear to God. I wasn't aware it had been handed over to anyone. I'm in command, and last I checked, I'm human. Same goes for my crew. Human, yes, but you do work for the Citadel now, Commander. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? Does no one know it's a co uh, cooperative project? I think it was classified 
I don't know if the Alliance broadcasted that too loudly because the ship just had its shakedown, so technically it, it was never incorporated officially into the Alliance. I wonder if it was like uh, officially incorporated, if that would have been like a big publicity stunt to push that fact, but I think it never got to that point. Um, do I have anything to say about Saren? I'm not going to say the council is protecting him right after I said that we have to work together with the council. Saren instigated the attack on our colony at Eden Prime. Once his involvement was proven to the council, I was assigned to bring him in. That's surprising, Commander. The official line says Eden Prime was attacked by rogue synthetics. Good luck in your mission. Thank you for your time, Commander Shepard. Yeah, please go away. I am not having the best day over here. Oh, I should also save because, again, the Talitha mission is... R it's not... It's not that it's difficult because, as you saw, I followed the steps okay. I was doing all right. It just feels very difficult and it only really worked out because I had the charm points for it. Actually, let me check. I'm human and same goes for my crew, she says, as two sexy aliens are following her. Yeah. <laughs> I have to wonder, does Shepard with Biotics have a choice to either telepathically take the gun or disable it? I don't think so. And I think it would be a little bit tricky. Oh no, Conrad's here. I think it would be a little bit tricky to get in um, a Biotic Blast and not do damage. Hey, Commander Shepard, it's me, Conrad Werner. Remember me? Yeah, I remember you, Conrad. There are rumors on the extranet that you've been made the first human specter. That's incredible. I'll do my best. Being a specter is a big responsibility. I just want to make humanity proud. The vids are all talking about Commander Shepard fighting for all of us back home. And your grace and skill have inspired a whole legion of admirers, too. Oh, Lord. Hey, can I get your picture? Okay, so some people in chat have been joking that Caden is a simp. And I jokingly say, yeah, but he's not really... Conrad Werner is the dic is the dictionary definition of a simp. Like if you looked up simp in the codex, his face would be next to it. Um yeah, you can have a picture. I don't have a problem with it, but why? Are you kidding? Nobody will believe that I talked with the beautiful Commander Shepard unless I get a picture. Just hold up your gun. Perfect. Thanks again, Commander. I'm gonna hang this in my living room. My wife will love it. I'm sure your wife will be super in intro. Ugh, I can't speak. Everybody's on my case today. It's, it's robbing me my ability to speak. I'm sure your wife will love it, Conrad. Shepard should have signed it. Because, Con uh, make no mistake, Conrad is gonna take that home and like show his wife he's gonna get it blown up to like a3 size and have it pasted right above their fireplace okay equipment garris please put this on thank you <laughs> he never tries or hopes to pursue you so there's that that is true conrad like at least never gets it into his head that you're dating Un unlike caden I've heard rumors that the space traffic controllers are overworked to a dangerous degree. I can't get into the control room, but you could. If you planted a bug inside, I could crack the story. Nothing ever changes, does it? It's the year 2183, and absolutely nothing changes. If you crack this story, what's likely to happen? Ideally, there will be calls to improve working conditions by hiring more controllers and upgrading systems. The council won't pay for improvements voluntarily. This story will provide that pressure. Maybe they should unionize and strike. Depressingly, that'll probably be true forever. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on becoming the first human specter, Commander. I'm certain you'll be up to the challenge. Thank you. I appreciate that. My name is Admiral Kahoku. It's about time the Alliance got one of our own in with the specters. We need people like you to deal with our problems. Is something wrong, Admiral? I'm getting stonewalled by bureaucratic assholes. <laughs> Nothing new. Maybe you can help me, Shepard. One of my recon teams was investigating some strange activity out in the Traverse. 
We lost contact yesterday. Now I can't get clearance to check it out. Suddenly it's a restricted area. But that doesn't apply to you, Shepard. Spectres can go anywhere they want. You could find out why my team dropped out of contact. I'll find them, Admiral. I appreciate that, Commander. I was running out of options. I'm gonna stay here and see if I can find anything out through official channels. Won't hold my breath, though. I'm on a break. Talk to someone else if you need anything. I've got a lot on my mind. Maybe I can help. Hmm. Well, maybe you can. You're a soldier, right? You ever head out to the Traverse? Um... I don't think... Yes, we did go there, because we went to uh, Eden Prime. The Traverse is a rough place. We're out there quite a bit. My brother's the captain of a ship called the Majesty. It was crossing the Traverse a few days ago when it disappeared. Just dropped right off the grid. And that usually means one of two things. They had massive mechanical failure, or they were attacked. Both of those are bad. Neither one of those options leaves a lot of hope. I won't give up on my brother. Not yet. I've got the coordinates for the last transmission from his vessel. What kind of ship was it? Don't let the name fool you. The Majesty's just a small trading vessel, only a handful of crew. But he kept it in good condition. I don't think mechanical failure is too likely. But they don't have any real weapons or shields. If anyone did come after them, the Majesty'd be a sitting duck. I'm not going to ask about a reward. That's like really not cool. Isn't anyone else looking into this? My brother's just a small independent trader. Ships like his disappear in the Traverse all the time. Okay, I'm not going to ask him about a reward because that just makes me feel nasty. I'm just going to say I'll do it. If your brother is still alive, I'll find him. Give me the coordinates. I'll forward them to your ship right away. Please let me know as soon as you find him. You seem to be attracting unwanted attention, Tally. Several passerbys were staring at you. Many think less of Quarians for traveling in the flotilla and for creating the Geth. They see us as scavengers, little better than thieves. It is natural for people to dislike rootless wanderers. If Quarians would just settle another homeworld, you would not run into such concerns. Garrus, it's not that simple, my dude. Once again, I said it last um, session. Garrus is super sheltered in the, especially in the first game. He has a very skewed view of how things work because he lived on Palavin his whole life with his dad, and then he joined Seasick. I do. My sister Dahlia is a crewman on the cargo vessel operating out beyond the fringes of the Traverse. Her ship was attacked by privateers. There were no reported survivors. I'm sorry for your loss. This is where it gets complicated. Last week, I received a message with her voice on it. Dahlia is alive. The rest of the crew was killed, but she was taken prisoner. The slavers demanded a huge ransom from me in exchange for returning her unharmed. Shepard is from the US? She's actually not. She's a colony kid. She's from Mindwar. And I believe her parents, um... I don't know, they wouldn't have been born on Mindwar. No, they wouldn't have because of the timeline. I believe her parents are Canadian, actually. Why didn't the raiders kill Dahlia along with everyone else? My sister probably told them who she was. My family's very wealthy, Shepard. They must have realized she was worth more to them alive. You better pay. I don't know, that seems like it's a Paragon option, but that's such a weird thing to say. I'm gonna choose it anyway, though. Coming up with the ransom seems like the best way to ensure Dahlia's safety. That's what I thought. I did what they wanted, transferred the funds to the account they specified. Only they never released her. They haven't contacted me since. I've made a terrible mistake, Shepard. I'm a diplomatic emissary. By law, I'm required to report any attempted extortion to CSEC immediately. But I was afraid for Dahlia, so I just paid the ransom. Now she's still missing. And if anyone finds out what I did, I could end up in jail. It's not really a stupid law. Um, ransoms. Okay, I'm going to have to stop myself from going into a full history lesson on ransoms. Um, I'm going to say you need not. I'll do it after I'm done with this conversation. You want me to find her and bring her back? You only need to bring her back. I've already found her for you. I tracked the ransom payment through several accounts. Eventually, it led to a small mercenary band operating out of the Artemis Tau Cluster. 
I need you to go to the Merc base, take them out, and bring my sister back. You shall be well rewarded. I don't do this for payment. Keep your reward. I'll bring your sister back. I promise. Thank you, Shepard. I knew you were the right woman for the job. Come back and see me when the job is done. I'd love to see what the Normandy can do in a fight. Only an idiot hopes for combat while flying in a stealth ship. But the stealth drive adds a new tactical level to space combat as we know it. Surprise attacks, undetected flanking maneuvers. This isn't a strategy simulation. If those new tactics don't work, we're salvage. Garrus just wants to use the gun. That's what it's about. Garrus just wants to use the big gun. Patching it through. Commander, Ms. Algelani's story on you just aired. Oh, good. She shouldn't have ambushed you like that, but you handled it pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm calmer now. She got me in a really bad mood. We had differences of opinion, sir. I hope she at least believed my sincerity. You handled yourself pretty well, Commander. She came across like a raving idiot. Good. There is one other matter, however. The Citadel has been trying to play down Saren going rogue. It makes the Spectres look bad. Your mention of him was politically inconvenient. Oh, well. Whoops. I wasn't aware of that. I won't discuss him again, sir. I'd appreciate that, Commander. I won't keep you any longer. Fifth Fleet out. Okay, back on the Mako. The best and worst thing about Mass Effect. I have no idea what the level requirement is for this mission, so we'll just see if I'm able to do it. Not now, Shepard! You're, you're on the door control, my, my guy. Come on. Oh, you got him. Okay, great. Okay, that's everyone. I think we're good, Shepard. You discover evidence that the Asari leading these slavers and Nasana Dantius, an important ambassador on the Citadel, are sisters. You should return to the Presidium and confront Nasana with this. So, her sister was not kidnapped by the slavers. Her sister was leading the slavers. Okay, now it's gonna be one of these planets. Let's, I always start with the outer ring and I move inwards. Elsages, let's see. Small distant Elsages is a small terrestrial with a trace atmosphere of methane and argon. The surface is composed of water, ice and calcium with occasional deposits of light metals. During the Alliance's pirate suppression campaign in the 2160s, the Paterian Alium, but how do you say that? The Paterian Eluam Ranpera was caught with his frigate Tuneron grounded on Alsages for drive discharge. When challenged by the cruiser Hyderabad, Ranpera refused to surrender. The Tuneron was destroyed attempting to take off. The debris is strewn across the southern hemisphere. And we got some rare metals from that. Okay, so not there. Next. Ontamalka, or these names. Ontamalka is a large hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in the atmosphere. Its massive gravity well tugs many asteroids from the outer belt inward, past the orbit of Altaya and Idolis, and eventually settle into the inner belt. Ontamalka's orbit is congested with hundreds of captured moons. Most last only a few thousand years before being ejected, dragged down into the atmosphere, or ripped apart by tidal forces and added to the gas giant's immense rings. Attempting to navigate this cha chaotic environment is hazardous at best. Ships without mil military-grade kinetic barriers are likely to suffer catastrophic impacts. Okay, we got some fuel from that. Next one... Altaya. Altaya is an unusually large terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of methane and ammonia. The surface is frozen and mainly composed of sandstone and other sedimentary rocks with deposits of iron and chlorides. 
Judging by the sedimentary composition of the crust, it appears that Altaya once possessed an atmosphere thick enough to support some form of liquid. What cataclysm stripped the atmosphere and left the planet to freeze is not currently known. Uh, this one, it don't. Commander, I'm picking ah. up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Okay, so this is the one we want. Idolus is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Idolus' surface is covered by wide deserts of silicate sand, with only a few areas of igneous rock highlands to break the abrasive dust-choked wind. Idolus' orbit is congested with debris thrown inwards by the gravity of the gas giant Ontamalka. Due to a high rate of meteor impacts, exploration is highly dangerous. And there we go, yep. So that is a thresher mall. That is one of the things that took out Shepard's entire squad on a coup that killed 50 people. The thresher moors are a major pain because thresher moors breed in an incredibly annoying way where they basically they breed via spores which get attached to spaceships and then when that spaceship lands on a planet the Thresher Moor, basically, if it finds that the planet's environment is habitable, the spores hatch into Thresher Moor larva. So these things are everywhere as a result. There we go. Okay. Phew. <sighs> a bunch of marines eaten by Thresher Moor. Shepard's therapist is going to earn their pay this month. Yeah. Shepard has really had to face her trauma today, hasn't she? Between um, Talitha and a Thresher Moor taking out this entire squad, she's really been through it today. Alliance soldiers. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. Okay, is there anything else? Oh, there's a medical kit. Looks like these men were under Admiral Kahoku's command. He'd want to know what happened here. The thing about the first game is, I don't know that a lot of people check the planet lore. That's also partly why I wanted to do these streams, not only to like um, indoctrinate people into liking Mass Effect, but there's a lot of like hidden details in a lot of the text that people skip over and you miss out on some really interesting details. Uh, Raisha. Raisha is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sodium and ammonia in its atmosphere. During the brief gold rush to Klensal, a few companies established an infrastructure for helium-3 skimming and deut deuterium mining on Raisha's icy moons. When Klensal proved to be less wealthy than expected, the facilities were stripped for parts and abandoned. Grimoire is an icy terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of frozen ammonia with deposits of tin and other light metals. When exposed to sunlight, Grimoire's ammonia can melt, forming equatorial seas of the toxic chemical. This has allowed a profusion of simple fungus and lichens to evolve in the low energy environment. A byproduct of their metabolism caused them to glow very faintly. While the light of an individual is insignificant, lar large patches seem to reinforce the light of one another and are visible from space. Let's see, there's that one. Okay, we did the asteroid. Next one is this one. A uh, cleansol. Oh, we can land on this one. Clensel has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. Its first geological surveys were performed by Batarians and suggested areas of great mineral wealth. Human mining concerns oops, spent billions of credits hustling to the distant system and sinking tests bored to claim the system for humanity. Oh, I see, okay. But Clensel had only an average level of mineral wealth. Valuable, but hardly worth the rush and expense. Merida Industria, a small Mexican company hoping to strike it rich in their first extrasolar mining venture, had to file for bankruptcy protection. Oh, that sucks. Investigation revealed the Batarian crew had deliberately falsified their surveys, hoping it would encourage human rivals to invest in a costly boondoggle. While unethical, this was not technically illegal, and the Batarian government disavowed the personal actions of a few misguided patriots. 
The planet is still littered with abandoned mining bases, which are often used as temporary meeting places for criminals. So that's cool. I think this is where one of the crime bosses are, where we have to go take out. Oh, see, this is the one. Um, this isn't going to mean anything to anyone who hasn't played the other games, but I've discovered this recently, and it ties into things that happen in, I think, the third game. So this was really weird. For, uh, not weird. This is really, like, interesting for me to find. Jochar is a terrestrial world with a trace of atmosphere of Krypton and Xenon. The surface is hot and mainly composed of unremarkable silicates. Occasional deposits of aluminum, magnesium, and other light metals can be found. Jartar is noted for the discovery of the Leviathan of Diz, the apparent corpse of a genetically engineered living starship. The Leviathan was found in the bottom of a crater by a Batarian survey team, and estimated to be nearly a billion years old. It disappeared after a visit to the system by a Batarian dreadnought 20 years ago. Since then, the Batarians have steadfastly denied that the Leviathan existed at all, and all the more con- what? all the more vociferously when shown recordings of the course made by Salarian researchers. So that's very interesting. We're basically a mafia boss contacted her, us and said please take out these other two mafia bosses because they're starting to deal in red sand which is a drug and getting people hooked on red sand and then when they can't pay their debt they sell them off to Batarian slavers. It's like super uncool. So I took the mission to basically do a mob hit on these two people. Which is actually a renegade choice, but I mean, again, it's like, do you want to play the game or not, right? I feel like I'm worse at the game when I'm on stream. Maybe it's just the performance thing, you know? Like, you're perfectly fine at doing something when you're by yourself, but the second you do it while people are watching, it's like you completely forget how to do something. Mm. Thank you, jeez. Helena was right, these guys had quite the operation going, but that's all going to change. One down, just one more to go. Zawin. Ah, oh, here we go. Zawin has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. The surface is frozen and mainly composed of cobalt with deposits of copper. Planet side conditions are hazardous with constant ice storms racking the surface. Uh, mine, it, well, on this planet, it's, it's minus 131 Celsius, so, you know, that's cool. Oh, I can't land there yet. There's probably a mission there. Usually when there's, like, a hazard, it means there's, we're gonna have to get out there at some point. Trelane is a lifeless rock with a trace amounts of xenon and krypton. Its surface contains large amounts of iron and magnesium silicates. Due to heavily cratered terrain, starships are discouraged from landing. A Salarian religious cult claims that a certain pattern of overlapping craters in the southern hemisphere resembles their goddess. The Majesty is a Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design. The ship is a derelict. All compartments are exposed to space and the fusion plant is leaking. The damage is consistent with ship mounted mass accelerator fire. Okay, scan? A faint trail of radioactive particles, possibly exhaust from a sub-light nuclear engine drive, leads towards the nearby planet of Zawin. Okay, now we have to go to Zawin. Go here. And now we can land. Uh Enemy is everywhere! Lost shields! Yes, I have shivered, thank you. Ah, they got me. Jeez. What an absolute disaster. Let's try that again. Ah, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Can you go over there and take it out, please? Thank you. You as well. Nice. Okay, excellent. Much more successful. You have discovered the corpse of Captain Willem of the MSV Majesty. His stiff fingers were wrapped tightly around a small data pad. Let's see if Caden has anything to say before we do any of that. Approach. Do you have some time to talk now, Commander? 
Um, <laughs> absolutely. She sounds like me. That's what I say. Uh, I'm listening. Let's hear it, Lieutenant. I'm always open to my officers. We've played it pretty close to the book so far, but we're a long way from backup. We've got some tough calls to make. I'm just saying, try to leave yourself a way out. I've seen what cutting corners can do, and I'd hate to have that happen to you, Shepard. Commander. Uh, <laughs> hmm. That is an absolute come on. That's a hundred percent come on. We are going to end up romancing Caden because I feel that not romancing Caden. First of all, you need like a guide to not romance Caden in the first game. Um, and I said this last time. The reason why is because Bioware were extremely proud of their PG-13 sex scene when this game came out. So they wanted to make sure you don't miss it. But I don't want to make Shepard be head over heels in love with him. Because we're going for Garrus in the second game. You can only romance Garrus in the second game. You can't even romance him in the third game. So I want to give you guys the quintessential Mass Effect experience. But I don't want Shepard to act like she's head over heels in love with Caden. Because that's kind of not the vibe. It's a personal observation, Caden. I, uh, I, I don't want to step on anyone else's toes. Especially if you're a... Uh, if I have misread your interests. It's all flirty? Yeah. Uh, oh, he is jealous because Liara has a crush on me. That's actually his problem. Someone? You're referring to our young Prothean expert. <laughs> I think she's older than both of us put together, but uh, yeah. There's a lower deck rumor that she's um, interested in you as more than a source of Prothean data. She's a very interesting lady, not to my uh, tastes, but uh, <laughs> I never claim to be big on alien culture. Oh, I'm glad Shepard can straight up call him out on it. You seem awfully worried about my personal affairs. It's just that we don't have much downtime these days. I like being around you, but I, I don't want to take up your personal time. I'm here, aren't I? I'm standing in front of you while you poke at the console, which I still don't know what you do on the ship, Caden. You shoot at things. I do understand that. I just don't understand why you're always poking at this console. Uh, I'm going to say it's not like that because um, I was going to say I'm here, aren't I? But this actually makes sure that I don't accidentally romance Liara because I, I don't want to break Liara's heart. I don't think she would survive that. Look, there's nothing between Liara and me. What's the real issue here, Caden? You're right, sorry. It wasn't, uh... Liara's not my main concern. I'm not questioning any decision you've made, Shepard. Let me be clear about that. It's just my experience that once someone lets something slide, it tends to pick up speed. Do you get my meaning? Uh, you were hoping for Garrus? Uh, Garrus is in goal, don't worry. Uh, Garrus, because he's not romanceable in the first game, the Garrus Shepard ship is a friends to lovers slow burn and i'm not even joking that is literally how it's written it is perfectly written as a slow burn friends to lovers it's actually really great uh bad experience sorry we were talking to caden sorry caden i am busy having a conversation with you and all i seem to be able to think about is garris um bad experience talk to me caden you got a little black rain cloud sitting over your head. I'll try to keep the deck dry. You know the records about the biotic training out on Jump Zero? They're all classified. Because the Alliance made mistakes. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. The only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think, asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. The Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. <sighs> the second any corporation starts doing something discreetly, 
it's not good. This is a weird um, conversation, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link Biotics and Ezo. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping them not break their own limbs. And their choice of teachers didn't help much. Only can actually... No, you can actually romance Liara, uh, regardless of which gender you play, because female Shepard especially is extremely bisexual. As in extremely. I haven't even tried to romance any um, women in this game, and uh, Shepard has spoken about it at least once or twice that she really likes girls about as much as she likes men. I'm sure Kinetics did what they thought was best. It wasn't best for us. They brought in an ex-military Turian named Commander Vernus. To introduce himself, he liked to say, I was at the helm of the dreadnought that killed your father. When I told him my dad wasn't in the war, he'd retired to Vancouver. My family had an inland home that matured to new beachfront. Vernus had it in for me after that. He cut corners, pushed hard. I mean, you either came out a Superman or a wreck. A lot of kids snapped. A few died. The point of all this, I guess, is that when you cut corners, it's not always obvious who pays for it. I'm very concerned by Caden's choice of words that his family has an inland home in Vancouver which matured to beachfront property. <laughs> That's such a subtle bit of world building, but <laughs> it's like, ah, yes. Maturing to beachfront property, that's one way to look at it. So why are you telling me this? Is there something I can do to help you get over it? I'm 32, Shepard. You don't serve as long as I have without coming to terms with yourself. You also learn that if someone is special to you, you help them. Try to keep them from making mistakes. Okay, so here I am going to pick this option because like I said, I want to give you guys the quintessential experience. So we've got no choice but to push the matter. Special, huh? If I'm out of line, just say the word. You're not out of line, Caden. But there are regs. I get you, Shepard. I don't make a habit of complicating the chain of command. Just think about what I said. Okay, so we spoke to him. I don't know if he has anything else to say. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough okay, of your no, time. Okay, no, he doesn't have anything commander. else. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. We'll talk later, Caden. I'd like that. Okay, cool. It's a little sad that we're speaking to Caden and he's revealing more of his backstory and his obvious crush on Shepard and all we're talking about is how we'll, <laughs> we'll eventually romance Garrus, but I mean, that is the Mass Effect experience. Oh, now uh, Chain of Command matters. I mean, Caden's a nice guy. He's a bit pathetic, but he's a nice guy. Anyway, let's see if Liara has anything to say. Approach. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. That approach that Shepard does, she only does it to party members that you are able to romance. So I find it kind of hilarious. They don't do that in the other two games. It's really funny that the two love interests have this little intro where she like approaches them. It's really funny. Uh, Maybe yeah. we could pick up where we left ah. off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you and making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. We don't have the luxury of time, and Asari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. That is true. At first I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. I'm doing the best I can, Liara. 
There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what happened on Akuz. The fact that you survive shows a remarkable strength. Um... Thank you, but once again we are treating severe trauma as something worthy of praise. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have told you whatever you wanted to know. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the woman you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. <laughs> She's really not good at hiding her crush. But Liara is kind of a bit of a disaster. <laughs> are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest, but it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard, but I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Lieutenant Elenko. <laughs> but you're a woman! No, um... I think... I have to say this. I do want to let Liara down easy because, again, um, because of the way the story is set up in the second game, it's you. I don't want to hurt Liara's feelings. I I can't. It makes me very sad if somebody would hurt Liara's feelings. <laughs> Liara's like, she's a really special character. She's so she becomes so close to Commander Shepard, even if you don't romance her. So the idea of romancing her then to dump her for Garrus, I, I can't do that to her. I care about Caden. A lot. I thought so. Still, I feel as if there is also some attraction between us, Shepard. Um... There is a lot from you. And I do love Liara a lot, but mm, not, uh, I'm not going that way this game. I'm not interested in you in that way, Liara. This is very embarrassing for me, Commander. Please, let's talk about something else. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. At least she's honest, and she doesn't do a freak out or anything. She's just like, oh, that's super embarrassing. <laughs> I think every single time Shepard stops talking to Liara, the second she walks out of the maid bay, Liara just starts like banging her head against her desk because every single conversation she's had with Shepard so far has had her like make a fool of herself in some way or another. So we can talk to Rex. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. <laughs> yes. Such as? Such as I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows. 
near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. I've got some unfinished business with my family, but that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus. A Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. I mean, I'll go get it. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander... I want to be there when you find him. So long, Rex. Shepard. So, Rex, it doesn't sound like he was alive for the Krogan Rebellions because he says his father was extremely old and he was alive during the Rebellions. Because I know online they say that um, Rex was alive during the Krogan Rebellions, but it doesn't sound like it to me. That sounds to me like his father was alive, but Rex wasn't born yet. Unless I'm misunderstanding that, but that's what it sounds like to me. Anyway, let's see what Garrus has to say. Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but... Yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. Oh, okay. So, so this conversation is really fucked up. Just a warning. What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless. Nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the cycles. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out, there was more going on than we first realized. I kind of want to hear about the Elcor serial killer. I mean, this conversation is interesting too, but I kind of want to know more about that. Anyway, yes? So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, 
the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Do you guys want to ask Garrus about Krogan testicles? Is this a conversation that you guys want to have? I mean, I'm going to make us have it regardless. I just kind of want to see what you guys' input is about that while I grab my drink. Okay, tell me more about Krogan testicles, Garrus. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. <laughs> anyway, anyway, getting back on topic. What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. You mean threatening? Was that really necessary? Garrus. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. He was growing parts inside these people? That's fucked up. Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess. But only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. Did you interview him, Garrus? I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. I like that at least three options in the dialogue so far is Shepard just going, what? Uh, that seems like a mean response. What do you mean they just let him go? He was threatening to kill hostages. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. Yeah, with good I cause. I told them those hostages were dead anyway, and just used them to make more organs. But they wouldn't listen. Yeah, no, Garrus, I know I say that, I, I say this every stream so far, but collateral damage is bad. It's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Palin and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. Garrus, you really need to rein in. I, I, I understand. I understand the passion. Like, I understand the burning need for justice but no <laughs> no if you don't care about the fate of those hostages then you're no better than he is you're just a terrorist with a badge exactly yeah maybe you're right it doesn't make it any easier but i see your point just wish i could have stopped him that's all do you have any idea what happened to dr salian i sent out feelers from time to time hoping to find something i thought i'd found him a while back he changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I mean, I'll check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. Okay, but we're not shooting any hostages on the way there, Garrus. You need to stop that. I mean, I'm I'm swatting him with the newspaper every single time he brings it up. 
He seems to be getting the idea, but he really needs to cut that out. Hey, Tully. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Oh, she's feeling better. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. Um, don't worry, you will sound kind of dismissive. Uh, but it's in the Paragon spot, which usually means it's a good option to pick. But I'm, I'm gonna go with like what? What are you hoping to find? Yeah. Usually people bring back something like a derelict ship we can use for salvage. But I need something bigger. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. So you're basically a Quarian princess. Quarian princess, yes! You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed, and that reflects badly on both me and my father. Oh, that's really rough. That's really rough. That's... That's very Japanese, I think. Oh, oh, I'm not talking about current day Japan. Kind of current day Japan, but that whole thing of like dishonoring the parent by your actions. That's like very feudal Japan. It's really not cool, in my opinion. The work you're doing here is more important than anything an Aquarian's ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Aquarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Seren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. Daddy issues the video game, pretty much. I'm trying to think, Caden doesn't have daddy issues. Caden doesn't have daddy issues. Um, his dad is just chilling in Vancouver. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Seren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First we stop Seren, then I'll worry about my own problems. Let's ask her more about her father. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago. Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. 
After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around, he always seemed a bit distant. Like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it, not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. I want to talk about something else. Like what? No, I think that's everything. I should go. See yeah. you later. I was gonna say, Green, uh, Shepard has a certain kind of daddy issue in that her father is dead. <laughs> He was killed on Mindoir. Commander? <sighs> Do you want to chat, Ashley? Do you have any new words of wisdom for me? I mean, last time you served as a combo of being racist, being homophobic, and being sexist all at the same time. I'm not entirely sure you're able to top yourself after that. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already sweet on someone. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Somebody said that they kind of wish Ashley and Caden got together. I can kind of see them more as a couple. It's It feels less messy than Shepard at least. But then he'd have to date Ashley, so make of that what you will. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above serviceman third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us though. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest, she's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. You're lucky to have a close family. Oh, sorry, I forgot about your family situation. <laughs> I mean... It's, it's fine. It's not fine. But it's fine. Or lack thereof. Relax, Williams. I've dealt with it. Ask me to clear a bunker of armed hostiles? No problem. Dealing with the foot in my mouth? Not so good with that. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. You like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple of years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen Hellwai away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. No means no! If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. <sighs> Ashley. 
Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. Oh, so she's awesome in other words. Her figure, though. So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand-to-hand. Ah, -hand. Uh, police have to fans. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. When he swung, she just... she wasn't there anymore and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. I mean, I wouldn't turn that story into some mark of bravado about your family. But I mean, that's just me. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Um, is that not Ulysses? That's the Odyssey, correct? <laughs> Bored now. Um, I think that's the Odyssey. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at 100 meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's oh, Ulysses. favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. Um, that's kind of a heavy thing to just drop casually into a conversation. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? I'm sure everybody is shocked to find out that Ashley is also super religious. I'm sure that is... That's, that's just shocking. Anyway, it's fine. You haven't been sermonizing, so... I guess it's okay. Everyone has the right to believe what they want. Says so in the Alliance Charter, only with fancier words. I'm glad you're open-minded about it. I've met a few people who were really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Okay, so that was a little less painful. 
not quite pain free, but at least less painful. I'm here to listen to you talk. I'm surprised that you're willing to kill your own Rex. Aren't the Krogan just a few generations away from extinction? You don't get it. For all your talk of honor and pride, the Turians never had to test their principles in a real struggle. Anyone who fights us is either stupid or on Saren's payroll. Killing the latter is business. Killing the former is a favor to the universe. Rex is great. I like Rex a lot. The Sana, you have some answering to do. Yes, Shepard? Did you find my sister? Dahlia's dead, and I know she was blackmailing you. So the truth comes out. I hope you're not angry. Surely you can understand why I lied to you. Not really. If people found out my sister was a criminal, I'd be considered a security risk. They'd revoke my clearance, or place me on administrative leave until she was apprehended. That is why I misled you. I could not risk you exposing me. But now that Dahlia is out of the picture, it's no longer a problem. I don't appreciate getting manipulated. I would have helped if you'd just told me the truth. Perhaps you're right. I am sorry. We have trust issues in my family. Obviously. I shall transfer a little something into your account as a token of my appreciation. I'm sure you'll find the amount satisfactory. I would have found it satisfactory not to be manipulated. You're a diplomat on her way up the ranks. Could be handy to have a specter who owes you a favor. You make a good point. Anyone can come up with credits. But I can give you authorization to purchase prototype Asari mods. I will get you added to our manufacturer's preferred client list. I think you'd be very interested in what they have available. Goodbye, Shepard. It has been a pleasure doing business with you. And that's Nasana. Don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. Of course she wouldn't. She'd be tossed out the nearest airlock if she did. Uh, I suppose. Besides, Nick, the consort's nothing like the girls back on the colonies. <laughs> she's... she's... You don't have to do it with her. You can just talk to her if you want. Is that all you did, Jazz? Just talk? I didn't say that. Ha! I bet you did too. Shut up, Fredericks. Um, Fredericks? What do you want? Oh, Commander. Is there something I can do for you? What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. Ha <laughs> ha You've never been, have you, boy? I, uh... No, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. <laughs> I've never had Rex with me in this conversation. That's hilarious. <laughs> can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. I think it's just funny because you rarely hear Rex laugh at things. Okay, Julie. Oh, we need to deal with this, yeah. Well, no, not exactly. But he wants to meet with me. I think he's going to kill me. And why do you think that? I... I can't really get into the details. But Shorbin will kill me if I leave here unprotected. I can't help you. Not unless you give me something more to go on. I... I can't. I'm sorry. It... And I've got other work to do. But I... But nothing. Don't bother me unless you're willing to give me details. You know what? I'm actually not going to deal with this right now because this starts this entire mission and I only have about 15 minutes left before my power goes out. So we're just going to plant the bug and talk to people at the tower and that's going to have to be it for tonight. I don't think we'll be, have time to get to the codex. It was no problem. Good luck with your story. It deserves to be heard. I appreciate your support. I hope this will save some lives in the long run. Thanks again for your help. I'm going to show this to my publisher. And that's Emily sorted. Let's speak to Kohoku. Um, hey. No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the counselor's assistants. About your men? Commander, any word on my missing men? I'm not sure how to tell you this, Admiral. Your men were killed by a thresher maw. A thresher maw? That's not... 
My men wouldn't just stumble into a thresher nest. Not the entire unit. Somebody lured them there with an Alliance distress beacon. Placed it perfectly so they'd land right beside the thresher nest. Damn it. I had a bad feeling about this ever since my team disappeared. An Alliance beacon used as bait. My unit wiped out. And nobody seems to know anything about it. Commander, I appreciate what you did. Now I need to do my part. The families of those Marines deserve to know why they died. Anything you need from me? Not right now, Shepard, but I'll let you know as soon as I find something out. I found your brother's body. His ship was attacked by privateers. Willem's... dead? I guess I should have expected this. When his ship dropped out of contact, I just knew. But I kept hoping he might still be alive. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you for finding him. It's better to know one way or the other. That's what they say, right? Please excuse me. I need to go make arrangements for his funeral. Not a lot of security here. Not if you can see anyway. Ten to one, there's a sniper tracking our every step. See, somebody was saying, why is Shepard and her crew allowed to bring weapons into the Citadel Tower? That's kind of the answer. I don't know if he says anything else. I don't think so. Let me check. No, he doesn't. Okay. Here. Reporter Kalisa Algelani recently attempted to land an interview with Commander Shepard, the first human specter. Commander Shepard answered difficult questions, demonstrating that under that military uniform is a keen diplomatic mind. We'll have exclusive footage later today. I'm glad that interview went well. I really don't like Kalisa. Emily is cool. Kalisa, not so much. Okay, so I'll save here so that I know next time what we're doing. So I think that's going to be it. So I wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, these streams are going relatively well, despite all the disasters <laughs> and me battling the AI in ways that the game did not intend. But I hope it's entertaining at least, even when I'm flailing around making a fool of myself. And I will see you guys next time. I'll alert you guys through the community post as well. Sorry, that's my machine. It's not yours. And I'll let you know when I go live again. Um, the start of August, we're going to have another art stream on the main channel. And I kind of do the Mass Effect streams when I see I have the electricity for it. So whenever I have the power, I grab uh, a chance to stream. And I have five minutes left, so I'm going to call it there. So thanks, guys. Hope you had fun. Thanks for joining the stream. Bye, everyone.